the title of my message today is Faith and Patience Always Produce Wins. Faith and Patience Always Produce Wins. Not just faith, but you need faith and patience because faith works through love. And love is, there you go, patient. How many know when you're believing God for your spouse, you got to not only believe, but you have to have patience. You believe in God for your family. You believe in God for finance. You believe in God for a healing in your body. If God doesn't heal you immediately, now you're in a faith fight. Now you got to have faith and patience. So let's go ahead and go through the scriptures. Number one, God says, I know your patience. So we know from scripture that patience impresses God. Faith and patience always work together. In the book of Revelation chapter 2, Jesus said to the church of Ephesians, he said, I investigated you. I was looking at you intently to give you a grade, pass or fail. He says, and I, and I saw that you're, you're I, I see that you work. And I see you labor. And I see that you're patient. Verse 3, and you have persevered, again, and have patience. And have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. So God is commending them as a church that they were a very patient church. And so here, he didn't correct them for being patient. He said, I seen you patient, and it impressed me. I seen how patient you were. I seen that you never changed. You could define patience as the ability to remain the same no matter what. I seen you consistent. I seen you faithful. I seen you reliable. I seen you dependable. I seen you trustworthy. I seen you unmoved, and I was impressed by that. Again, in 1 Corinthians 13, the Bible says that love is patient. It always protects, it always trusts, always hopes, and always, again, perseveres. It remains faithfully the same. In the book of Hebrews 6, 10 through 15, it says, God is not unjust to forget your work and your labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints, and you do minister. And that reminds me of so many of you that are watching me today, how you are a family group leader, and you, you have a labor, of, labor in love. Through this whole coronavirus, a lot of you leaders, you could have just locked down. You could have just kind of said, you know, just us four and no more. We're just going to go into survival mode. But you didn't. You didn't. You buckled down and you did what you had to do. Why? Because you, you, you didn't do it in your own ability. You didn't do it in your own strength. But the love of God compelled you. The love of God strengthened you. You couldn't leave those people you were working with just out there to the wolves. No, he said, I got to protect them. I got to make sure they're going to be okay. Not just my own family, but even I'm going to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. And I commend you for that. Come on, somebody give God a praise for all those that ministered and they're still ministering. In verse 11, but Paul said, it's not good enough just for the leaders to do it. He said, we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. So he said, I don't, I don't want to just see the leaders helping people and serving people and ministering to people. He said, but that's for every single Christian. How many believe that every Christian is called by God to save souls and to make disciples? And then verse 12 says that you do not become sluggish or lazy, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So think about this. Th these leaders are believing God for their breakthrough. They're believing God for their family. They're, they're believing God for their finance. But in the, in the process of believing for their own stuff and trusting God for their own stuff, here they are laboring, helping other people. They're not focused on what they don't have. They're not focused on the neglect. They're not focused on the lack. They're focused on, you know what? As I take care of God's house, God's going to take care of my house. And how many of you watching me right now? You've been tithing. You've been giving. You didn't have to, but you're faithful to God, and you're trusting God, and you're laboring for God. Come on, clap. And God said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take care of you. But you've been trusting God through the whole thing. But through faith and patience, we do inherit those promises. Verse 13, for when God made a promise to Abraham, how many know God promised Abraham a blessed family? Because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you. And after Abraham patiently endured he obtained the promise so again we find that when there's belief abraham believed god god said i'm going to give you a family he didn't have a family god said i'm going to bless your family god said i'm going to bless your family i'm going to bless them so much they're going to bless all these other families and that's what god has promised our family a blessing on our marriage if you're not married he blessed to, he, he promised to bless you with a future spouse if you don't have children he promised to give you children if your kids are not where you want them to be he promised to get them where they need to be. 
So right here, God is giving Abraham a family blessing. He's given him a, a, a financial blessing. He's given him a physical health blessing. So right here, God said, I'm going to bless you. But for, for 25 years, it didn't look like Abraham's life reflected completely what God said. But Abraham was not moved by what it looked like. Abraham had a promise from God. And through faith, belief, and patience, he inherited the promises of God. How many believe that through faith and patience, we will inherit the promises of God? You know, we need, to, we need to be patient in this time and this season. You know, this is a time where we want to be patient with our children and patient with our spouse and patient with ourselves and patient with others. It's not time to be frustrated. It's not time to be in a rush. It's not time to be in a hurry. Yes, it's opening up. Everything's opening up, but I'm not rushing anything. I'm not going to rush it. Faith and patience is how we conquer. I'm not going to let anybody or anything push me. I'm going to be, I'm going to walk in faith. I'm going to walk in patience and I'm going to inherit the promises of God. That building we're believing for. Faith and patience is going to get us that building. These training centers we're wanting to buy. It's through faith and patience we're going to buy these, homes, these, these training centers. These recovery homes I want to open. It's through faith and patience we're going to open them. Centro de Libertad, Freedom Spanish Ministry. We're going to open it through faith and patience we're going to open that. Are you hearing me? When we plant campuses all over the world, it's through faith and patience we're going to get this thing done. Not in a rush, not in a hurry. If you want to learn something from me, learn that lesson. Learn it well. I've learned to be not only in faith, but I've also learned to wait on the timing of God. And some people want to rush you, and they want to, some of you are single right now, and they're putting pressure on you, using words like you're going to become an old maid, and you're getting too old, and you're, you know, this, and all these, but don't let people put pressure on you. If God is not putting pressure on you, don't let nobody get you in a rush. Don't let nobody get you in a hurry. You seek God. You put God first. You take care of God's house, and God will take care of the rest. When I was waiting on God, and he was, you're not married yet. You're not married. Everyone's getting married, and I got married almost at 30 years old. But you know what? It was God's timing. It was God's timing. If I would have married too, too early, Liz would have been a teenager, and I would have went to jail. Come on, somebody. I'd have been preaching from prison. Come on. <laughs> God knows what he's doing. I didn't know God was saving this little girl. Seven, she was 17 at the time. I was already serving God. She wasn't even saved. But God was working on her, developing her, doing a work in her life. I didn't even know. But when the time was right, come on, it was like, when a man loves a Come on, somebody. Man, I heard in the special, oh, but it was God's timing. It was perfect, and it's been blessed ever since. But if it rushed it and made it try to happen or, or, or went out and tried to go out with somebody else, it would have messed everything up. And we could have messed up my purpose, her purpose, and you wouldn't be here today. And my son Joshua wouldn't be here. My daughter Joy wouldn't be here. My son Noah wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the life I have today. But it, come on, somebody. Somebody shout, Jesus. It's like, you know, that's how you say you're preaching good. You say, Jesus. Go on, one, two, three. Say, Jesus, that boy can preach. The old church used to throw rags at you. Come on, preach, son. Like 42, son. <laughs> Number two, understand how temptations, tests, and trials work for us. Oh, pastor, I don't want to hear about no temptation, tests, and trials. Well, then I don't know what to tell you because they're coming. Yep. James 1, 2, and 3 says, be very happy or count it all joy when you are tested in different ways. You know that such testing of your faith produces patience, endurance, grows you up so you're not so, you know, flaky. Some of you are coronavirus Christians only. Once the NBA and everything opens up in the festivals, we're going to find you anymore. Coronavirus Christian. You're serving the Lord because you're freaked out right now. But once everything opens up, we're going to see how real your Christianity is. That was a little blow, I know. Okay. Let me go. Can I go? All right. Satan wants you and me to break down. He wants to break us. He wants us to break down so we break from the word. You see, tests and trials and temptations 
don't come from the Lord. Those are sent by the devil to take away your faith. It, he wants us to move into frustration. This is not faith and patience. That's what the enemy wants us frustrated. He wants us breaking down. He wants us to break down and he wants us to break away from the word. Disconnect us from the word. Mark chapter four, the cares of the world, the desires for other things come in and choke the word, the persecution, the tribulation, the lack of root in a believer's life, then the enemy comes in and steals that word. Why? Because he doesn't, he's not afraid of you or me. So he's not intimidated by Pastor Jay or he's not intimidated by you, but he is intimidated by your faith because your faith and your level of faith represents your authority and the enemy recognizes authority. Yes, he does. You and I recognize it. When somebody with authority opens their mouth, the atmosphere shifts because the devils realize this person understands what they carry. So he's not after us, but he is after that authority, that faith. Come on, clap like you believe you got authority. So if he gets our eyes off the Lord and, onto, and, and gets our eyes onto the test and the temptation, the trial, then he can steal our faith. And he steals it through offense. He steals it through fear. He could steal it through discouragement. He could steal it through a bad confession. And he could steal it through a lifestyle of sin. But how many know we're not going to let the enemy use temptations, tests, and trials to steal the word of God out of our heart? We're going we're gonna to keep the word of God in our heart. We're going to hide it so we don't sin. We're going to walk in love so we inherit the promise. We're not going to get discouraged. We're going to be full of courage. We're not going to be fearful. We're going to walk in faith. We're not going to let the enemy use these things to steal the word of God out of our heart. But if you think God is testing you and God is tempting you and God is putting you all through all this, then how are you going to stand against it? No, it's the devil. But pastor, I went through all these storms in my life and I, and I came out stronger. Of course. That's why Satan, you can use Satan. Satan is our trainer. He sends temptations our way, trials and tests to destroy us, not to help us. But we use them to get stronger and to develop our character. Let me say it again. Satan is our trainer. He sends temptation, trials, and tests to destroy us. But we use them to get stronger and to develop our character. Temptations, trials, and tests are indicators to let us know what level we are on. See, we don't know where we are until a test comes, a temptation comes, a booty call comes, a trial comes. And then we thought we were big faith giants, and all of a sudden we're crying, fearful, full of anxiety. Then all of a sudden we realize, I'm not as strong as I thought I was. I better work on this area of my life. So you can begin to use it to develop yourself. Or you can go with Satan and let him destroy you. No, this is the victory that overcomes the world. It's our faith in God. See, Satan wants to destroy us, and God can use it to build us. Come on, clap like I'm preaching. Temptation, let me say it this way. Say, we grow. We don't go, we grow. See, what was hard to believe for is easier now because our faith has been tested. It's been proven. It's been developed. We're getting, remember that one on Rocky song? He's getting stronger. We're getting strong. He's like boxing in the air. That's what happens to us. We get stronger. When, we, when I first started this church, it took all the faith I had. I mean, every ounce of faith, you could have squeezed it like a rag. You could have squeezed it and squeezed to get the $400 a month payment for the Bluebird Art Lounge. Man, I would, I would, I would be up in the middle of the night. <gasps> Where are we going to get the money? Four hundred. I was freaked out by four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars now won't even buy us toilet paper for a week. I don't know what y'all do with all that toilet paper when you come to church, man. Lord have mercy. I mean, it won't even buy our hand sanitizer when you guys come back. Four hundred dollars. You know, our budget's millions now. I mean, our our new building we're believing for five six million. I mean, millions to believe God for now. But there was a time in my life where $400 was all the faith I had. And the enemy would try to tempt me and test me and put me through trial to break me down. But God used that, and I partnered with the Spirit of God, and I yielded to faith and patience. And instead of getting it, those things getting me weaker, it's gotten me stronger. So now when a big bill comes, I can believe God. 
Act like you've gotten stronger through this coronavirus, not weaker. That's why we can say with confidence, what the devil meant for evil, God is turning around for my good. Romans 8.25 in the Living Bible, but it, if we must keep trusting God for something that has had, hasn't happened yet, hasn't happened yet, hasn't happened yet, it teaches us to wait patiently and confidently. How many know the longer you wait, the stronger you get? And you and I know the longer we wait, the weaker we get, the more frustrated we get. We try to make things happen on our own. We're no longer in faith. And I just keep feeling this for you singles because you're trying to make it happen. Do whatever you got to do. Lose the weight. Get pretty. Do your nails. Work out. That's all fine and dandy. But don't try to make that happen. Don't try to make it happen on your own. No, God is with you. Don't get in the toil. Don't get in a hurry. Don't get in the curse. God will bless your business. God will bless your career. God will bless your family in his timing. His timing, not yours, not mine. His, there's so many times I wanted God. I mean, one time we were believing God for a house across the street from the church. We were believing for it. In faith, making confessions like, 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 a, like a machine gun. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. It's my house, my house, my house, my house, my house, my house, my house. My house. And I convinced it's our house. And I was in faith, but it wasn't God's will. And then finally, it all fell through, and I was so discouraged. And my wife, we lost like five, ten grand. Just so discouraged. And then I looked back a couple years later, and I said, thank you, Lord. You didn't give me that house. All them crazy people in my church would have came on my door and knocking every day, and you would have drove me crazy. No, I'm just kidding. But I, I mean, I, I, later on, God blesses with a beautiful home, way better than that home, 10 times, 100 times better. But, you know, we would have been locked into that thing. We would have settled. We would have made it happen, and it wasn't even God's timing or God's will. Don't rush things. Don't force things. Don't make it happen. Things are going to begin to open up now, but don't force it. Sometimes you have to be, you have to move hastily. That's the spirit of God says, like when we got this building, he said, move now, get it now. You got to move hastily. That's God leading. But normally what I notice, God blesses little by little and faith and patience will get us there. But you have to discern the timing and the seasons of God. Don't get in a hurry when God is not saying get in a hurry. And you know when it's not God putting you in a hurry when there's fear driving you. When there's faith, you know it, and you move quickly, and you move swiftly, because God is into that too. Number three, the testing and developing of patience leaves us lacking nothing. Endure until your testing is over, James 1.4 said. Then you will be mature and complete. See that? And you won't need anything. So he says, when you wait on the Lord and you allow patience to have her perfect work, you become mature and you become complete. You become seasoned. You become like, there's almost like a, like a, uh, God, what's that? Or like a, like a hum about you. Just, just a, a solid, a solidness to you. You're not up and down. You're not, you're just solid. And now God can say, okay, now. You've, you've allowed this test trial, temptation to come your way. It's come. And you didn't, it didn't take you out. It's only made you stronger. And now you're actually ready for the blessing I'm about to give you. You're actually mature enough, and you're actually ready to handle the marriage. You're ready to handle the breakthrough. You're ready to handle that level of wealth because you went through the, t the fire. You went through the flood. And now God has brought you and is bringing you into a wealthy place. That is a word from God right there. <laughs> went through the fire. Went through the flood. Now God is bringing you into a wealthy place. I receive it. Come on, say, I receive it. Went through the fire, went through the coronavirus, and now God is bringing me into a wealthy place. Genesis 50, 20, in the New Living Translation, it said, Joseph said, you intended it to harm me, but God intended it for my good. And he brought me to this position so I could save many li lives. And this is where we go from faith to faith, and from glory to glory, and, and we go from strength to strength, from power to power, and from favor to favor. You see, Joseph, when he got a word from God, he wasn't ready for that word to manifest in his life. He was arrogant. He was cocky. He was undisciplined. He had, a, he had a, 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 a loose lips. He had pride in his life. He wasn't ready. But after he went to that test, that trial, he went through those testings, all of a sudden, instead of getting bitter or quitting or fearful, 
he stuck with it and he let the Lord work with him. And now when he stepped in that palace spot, he was ready for it. And some of you have gone through some testing and some trials and some temptation. Some of you are there right now. And you're saying, God, I need help. And let God strengthen you through it. Let faith and patience develop. Because that's all part of that preparation. So when that door opens and you step through it, you've allowed God to work his character in you. And you use Satan for God's glory. Satan sent all that to take you out. That's why the Bible said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm preaching, huh? Romans 105, 19, in the Good Word translation, it said, until what Joseph predicted came true, the word of the Lord proved him right. It proved him right. It tested him, and it proved him right. So he had a word from God. One day you're going to bow down to me. One day I'm going to be the overseer of this, this, this land. One day you're all going to come, and I'm going to help you all. And, 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 and that happened when he was a young man, like 17 years old. And here he is like in his 40s, and the word finally came to pass. Look at, how, look at how long it took Joseph to go from a word from God, and then look, now he's in the palace. How many years did it take for him to go from that word from God to where he finally showed up in that abundant place? The testing, the temptation of Potiphar's wife, the testing of being offended, the testing of loneliness, the trials of, of, of being abandoned, of being misunderstood of being falsely accused, of being persecuted. The trials and the tribulation all came his way to, to take him out. But instead of taking him out, instead of making him be bitter, it made him better. What are you going to do with this test? What are you going to do with this trial? What are you going to do with this offense? What are you going to do with this situation? You're going to make it take you out? Make it break you down? Let Satan win? Or are you going to take advantage and use the devil to get you stronger? Because God will give you grace for this storm. God will give you strength for this battle. God will give you power to conquer this giant. God will give you ability to run through the truth. God will give you ability to leap over a wall. You got to yield to faith. You got to yield to patience. James 5.11 said, indeed, we count them blessed. Say blessed. See, so when, we, when we get our calculator out, when we begin to calculate, we say this, this calculation, seven times seven, times eight equals blessed and right here in James it says we count them blessed how many know in the spirit realm we want to be calculated and then somebody looks at our life and they say that's called blessed he said and we count them blessed who what endure you have heard of the patience of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord see the intended of the Lord see Satan's intention for Job I'm going to kill your family. I'm going to kill your wife. I'm going to take your money. And then I'm going to kill you. That was Satan's intention. But God's intention was always to bless. And here it says that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. And what happened at the intention of, of the Lord, the, the end result of Job's struggle? The Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And that's what's about to happen to you and me. Those that endure the test and endure the trial and were in faith and stayed in patience. God said, like Joseph, I'm gonna promote you. Like Job, I'm gonna give you a double for your trouble. Come on, I can't prophesy over nobody. Act like God's about to give you an increase, a spiritual anointing a financial breakthrough, a family miracle, a mind renewal. I feel something shifting. Come on, I know this virus is lifting. I know things are changing, but we're not in a hurry and we're not in a rush because in the end, our help doesn't come from a government, our help doesn't come from a man, our help comes from the Lord. Now give him a shout of praise. We go from glory to glory. We go from faith to faith. We go from strength to strength, from favor to favor. Say it out loud. Somebody in your house, somebody next to you, look them in the eye and tell them, after this temptation, after this test, after this trial, because you don't quit, because you didn't break down. 
because you didn't break from the word but you stayed faithful to God you stayed reliable you kept tithing I'm talking to a leader you kept on doing leadership you kept opening your home you kept doing zoom group after zoom group and the Lord wants me to tell you he wants me to prophesy I've seen you on your zoom I've seen you on the phone call some of you in the middle of the night discipling people weeping you wanted help yourself but you said the devil's a liar I'm gonna trust God and I dare you to tell your neighbor because you were faithful God says you're ready now double for your trouble double come on come on give him a shout in here prophetic word as I was studying the Lord said in my heart I knew it I knew it I knew what it said and I didn't know where it was and I, he, heard, he told me it's in the message Bible and I only had like a phrase of it and I started looking and I stumbled on it and I think this is a prophetic word from God Hebrews 10 34 through 39 he says nothing they did bothered you nothing they did sets you back so don't be bothered by anybody now i found myself getting bothered by the government bothered by our, our government about i was getting bothered by everything i was seeing coming from our california government getting bothered by all these politics so i found myself getting bothered and god said don't let it bother you anymore don't let it upset you anymore they didn't set you back then and they're gonna set you back now because if I'm for you, ain't no Pharaoh can be against you. And then God said, don't throw it all away now. You were sure of yourself then. It's, a, it's still a sure thing now. You need to stick it out, freedom. You need to stay with God's plan. So you'll be there for the promised completion. And the Lord said, it won't be long now because I'm on my way. And I'm showing up any minute from now. And anyone who is right with me will thrive on loyal trust. If you cut and run, I won't be very happy with you. But we're not quitters. Come on, say I'm not a quitter. It says we're not quitters who lose out. Oh, no. We're going to stay with it and we're going to survive. We're going to trust all the way. And let me add to that. We're not just going to survive, baby. We're about to thrive like Economy, we declare a boom, we declare increase, we declare in Gosham there is plenty, we declare in the land of famine, Isaac had a hundred full year, and we declare 2020 the year of the redeemed, 2020 the year you testify of the goodness of God of the faithfulness of God of the reliability of God now give him a glorious praise and worship because we go we go he takes us higher how many believe he takes us higher how many believe you're going higher? Come on, sing it by faith. song says now listen to this as I was studying faith and patience I felt the Lord say tell my people to be patient for my coming that I'm coming back and I'm not coming back for a beat up church 
I'm not coming back for a defeated church. I'm coming back for a glorious church. And how many know Jesus is coming back? You know, all this coronavirus has woken everybody up to the coming of the Lord. People ask me, Pastor, is it the end? I don't know. Pastor, is it the end? I don't think so, but I don't know. This could be the end. This could be the beginning of the end. Well, if it is, then it's going to be our best day. We could be persecuted, but it will be our best day. We could go through the fire, but it will be our best day. The enemy can throw everything against us, but it will be our best day. Because he's not coming back for a defeated church, a broke down church. He's coming back for a glorious army. Somebody give a praise on that day. You believe it? Be patient for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Whew. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth? He plants, he waters, and he waits patiently for it until he receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain against each other lest you be condemned for the judge is standing at the door and he's ready to open it my brethren take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience we count them blessed who endure for you have need you have heard of the perseverance of Job and you've seen the end intended by the Lord that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful and above all my brethren do not swear either by heaven or earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. How many believe we say yes to God? We're not up and down. We're not wishy-washy. We're not coronavirus Christians. We're not quarantine Christians. We're Christians today. And when the church opens back up, we're Christians tomorrow, you come back to my house in a year from now. If the Lord hasn't come back yet, I'm going to be a Christian then. And you come back in 10 years, and I'm going to be a Christian then. You come back in 20 years, not only am I going to be a Christian, but my kids, some of you your grandkids, and some of you your great-grandkids, because our yes is yes. And how many know we say yes to the Lord? Lift your hands to God and say yes to your word, yes to your promise, yes to everything you've said to me, Lord, yes to the ministry, yes to the vision, yes to saving souls. Yes to making disciples. Yes to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Yes to tithing. Yes to loving. Yes to praying for the sick. Yes, 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 yes to holiness. Yes to purity. Yes to walking in love. Yes to patience. Yes to kindness. Yes to faith. Yes to God's favor. Say yes. Cry an anthem. Come on, let's worship. You can sense that special anointing right now. You can feel it all over the room. I'm sure you're feeling it right there in your living room, wherever you're watching from. I'm gonna believe there's a day coming. There's a day coming, and I believe it's coming soon. Where God is gonna come back for a church. That he's gonna, that they're gonna blow the trumpet, and the angel of God's gonna blow that trumpet in Zion. That eastern sky is gonna split, and he's gonna come back for a church, and we'll be ready, we'll be willing, we won't be compromised, we won't be lukewarm, we won't be loveless, but we will say yes to God and his will. We are the church, not just the church in America, but we are the blood bought, blood washed, redeemed church of the Lamb of God. Somebody one more time, lift your hands and say, come Lord Jesus.
Jesus. Touching your body, touching your heart, touching your life right now. Holy, holy. Father, we bless your name. And thank you, Lord, for this word. We receive it with joy and gladness. And I pray it would just fall on good ground. And we receive it and we're going to walk in it with all of our heart and with all of our strength. Thank you for giving us patience. Thank you because that's how we inherit all the promises of God through faith and patience. Well, let's give God one big praise together as a church family. Come on, God is so good. Come on, he's so good. Let's celebrate the goodness of God today. He's so good, he's so good. There's no one like him. I praise God for the, the good news and even what Pastor Jason was talking about, about opening up soon. That's just wonderful news. And just pray for us as we pray through all of the details of that. But I just want to encourage you that if your heart is far from God, you're not listening to this message by accident. I want to encourage you that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you give your heart. You give your life to Jesus Christ. He wants to come into your heart. He wants to give you a fresh start. He wants to give you a new beginning. So if you're far from God, once maybe you knew him, or maybe you've never given him your heart, you've never given him your life, today is the day of salvation. If that's you in your heart, I want to lead you in that prayer of giving him your heart for the very first time or giving him your heart again. Just close your eyes all over the room and we're going to pray today. Just you can even put your hand on your heart because that's where God, he hears our prayers. And just say, Father, I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. And I believe that Jesus is the son of God. And he came and he died and he rose again on the third day for me, for the forgiveness of my sin. I give you my heart, Jesus, and I give you my life. I ask for a fresh start and I ask for a new beginning in Jesus' name. Come on, give God praise. Thanks for watching Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.